We are okay. We are on the air. Greetings, everyone. Wherever you are, whenever you are, and welcome to live coverage of Orioles baseball, where tonight the Baltimore Orioles will be taking on the Kansas City Royals in game two of a three game series at Kauffman Stadium. How you doing, everybody? This is your old pal Steve here, a.k.a. the Bird Watcher, a.k.a. B.W., a.k.a. B-dubs, whatever you want to call me. I'm so happy you found my channel. Uh, it's a brand new channel, so you're not the first to be finding it uh, recently. I uh, just started it up for this 2024 season. Began uh, starting with games and spring training, a handful of games. There weren't too many televised but it gave me a chance to sort of warm up. And the idea is to cover every Orioles baseball game from start to finish the entire season and into the postseason uh, for a few different reasons. One, uh, I want to archive it for myself. I feel like this is a magical season and I'm ready to document it and perhaps look back on it uh, with fond memories for years to come. Uh, but also I wanted to build a global Orioles community online, I felt like uh, there was a need for a dedicated live Orioles coverage baseball channel. Uh, some other major league teams out there have their own on the internet, so why not me? Why not us? The Orioles need to represent. So yeah, I put this channel together, and I'm finding people come in and enjoy Orioles baseball from all over the world. So if you don't have the ability to watch the game on the TV, if you don't have a way to listen to it on the radio, or be just like uh, an environment like this where you can interact here and chat. We've got the Charm City chat here where folks can talk baseball, follow along with the game, chant along, let their frustrations be heard, everything. You get it all here. It's a nice interactive experience for Oriole baseball fans and baseball fans in general. Okay, we're going to go over the starting lineups and the starting pitchers here in Game 2. Obviously, last night, Game 1, probably for me, the worst loss of the season. It uh, may not have been the biggest uh, lopsided score loss, but, man, we took a really nice beginning of a outing from Dean Kramer, who got us into the fifth inning, giving up just one base runner, unfortunately, it was a solo home run. Otherwise, he was pitching a perfect game through the first five innings. Meanwhile, the Orioles had runners at second and third and one out in the first, and then the bases loaded with one out either in the second or third. We could not score, and then the Royals wound up uh, pouring it on later in the ball game, and wound up uh, winning rather easily as our bullpen uh, kind of got lit up. Keegan Aiken and uh, Dylan Tate getting lit up. All right, we're going to try to come back tonight with Corbin Burns on the mound, folks, our ace. But it's not going to be easy because the Royals are countering with their ace, Cole Reagans. Now, Reagans might be 0-1 on the season. Don't let the lack of wins fool you. He's good. A 1.93 ERA. Uh, both of these pitchers have... Pitched pretty much equal time, 23 and two-thirds innings for Burns. Reagans has recorded one less out. Uh, Reagans has four more strikeouts, but has also issued three more walks. Burns has given up a couple of more homers, but he's given up a few less hits overall. The two are pretty evenly matched uh, in terms of effectiveness on the mound. Uh, we would hope Burns has a slight advantage. We are considering him to be a front runner for the Cy Young Award this season. Uh, but as you can see, according to the matchup predictor, whatever that means, they've got Kansas City as slight favorites. So even with the ace on the mound, the Orioles are going to have their work ahead of them. And we really need this game too because game three tomorrow, it's going to be Cole Irvin on the mound against Seth Lugo, who is undefeated with an ERA, I believe, under two. So... We got our work cut out for us today. We got to get the job done. Your boy's bringing up the stream right now. He'll say hi to everybody in chat in just a sec. Looks like there aren't too many people here yet. I can tell when 
There's a space. When the space in chat is half black, that means nobody's here yet, which is fine. Your boy, the bird watcher, needs to sort of settle into tonight's game, you know? Sip on some coffee. Just get prepared for the game tonight. Let's see who is here. Bill Holland, hello. ABW, Bill, Rick, and Marlene listening to the boy tonight. Well, I'm happy to hear it. I'm not sure who Rick and Marlene are. Maybe they're your family. If there's a kid in there, I hope to uh, keep my language nice and charming. We got Fitzy checking in. How you doing, Fitz? Your socks wrap it up. Another reason for the Orioles to go out and win tonight. Hey there, Daniel. Sean the Whip Whipple in the house. We got Dennis here as well. Narniac checking in. The entire slate has been a clown show of ridiculous games. And this is game number 20 tonight, folks. 20th game of the season. This is at the point where you start taking stock. Basically, we're halfway to the first quarter <laughs> of the season. Still a long way to go. After tonight, we'll still have 142 games to play. Hey there, base. Good evening. Let's go over the starting lineups. First pitch should be a few minutes away. For the Orioles, your boy is going to start talking about something that he's been saying now for a while. But tonight, I mean, this is it for me. We really need a strong lineup against Cole Reagans. And uh, top six of the order, I can handle. All right, maybe top five. Bottom four, we'll talk about it. Gunnar Henderson, as he has every game so far, I believe, will lead off and play shortstop. Adley Rutschman will DH tonight and hit second. Ryan Mountcastle is at first base, batting third. Anthony Santander in the cleanup spot. He'll be in right field. Jordan Westberg up to the fifth hole. And he'll be at second base. Austin Hayes in left field, batting sixth. Ramon Urias is at third base, hitting seventh. James McCann behind the plate, hitting eighth. And finally, Jorge Mateo in center field, batting ninth. Yeah. For the uh, Royals, you'll have Michael, Michael Garcia at third base, leading off. Bobby Wood Jr. at short, batting second. Vinny Pascantino at first base. Hitting third, Sally Perez behind the plate. He's the cleanup hitter. MJ Melendez in left. Nelson Velasquez, your DH, hitting sixth. Michael Massey, second baseman, batting seventh. Hunter Renfro in right field, batting eighth. And Kyle Isbell is in center field and a nine hole. That is pretty much what the Royals put out last night. I think so. Maybe one change. But, yeah, folks, Hayes, Urias, McCann, Mateo at the bottom of the disorder. This is what our lineup looks like against left-handed starters. And I'm going to say it for the 8,224th time since about, I don't know, the first week of March. Kobe Mayo needs to be on this team. I mean, honestly. You put Mayo in there, you take one of these four batters at the bottom of the lineup out, and look how much stronger that is. You got a right-handed bat in there with some pop. I mean, as a team, the O's are hitting 074 against Reagans. My goodness. Yeah, so we got Mateo and Urias. McCann again, and this is the other thing. Adley Rutschman has DH'd how many times so far this season? Like seven? Like every th third game? He's a DH? What is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. It's that because we don't have a decent option to replace Ryan O'Hearn at DH, we think uh, James McCann is our best option. And I guess he is batting 280, but, I mean, come on. We could have Kobe Mayo up. You replace Urias with uh, Mayo, you're, you're all set. Or if you want to send Holiday out, then you, you start Mayo against righties as well. Move Westberg to second. 
How you doing there, Don C? I'm just looking at this lineup and scratching my head. Cole Reagans is going to make his fifth start of the season again. An ERA of 1.93. 29 strikeouts. And 23 in the third innings. All right, we're about to get underway, folks. Folks, if you're watching along with the Bird Watcher on your TV, here's a tip. You're going to be ahead of me, and you're going to want to get synced up. So have the remote in your hand, and as soon as the first out is recorded, whether it's a strikeout, pop out, thrown out at first base, the moment that out is recorded, hit pause on your screen, allow me to announce that out, and then unpause your game, and you'll be all synced up for the rest of the ball game. Okay, Gunnar Henderson, first pitch is taken High for ball one. We're underway. And the next one is on the outside corner at the knees for a called strike. Gunner hitting 273. Orioles with their black tops on tonight with the gray pants. There's a called strike. Henderson not happy with it. One ball and two strikes to the leadoff man here in the ballgame. And the next one from Reagans is called strike three, and that pitch was low. Are you kidding me? We're starting the night like this? We're starting the night like this. We're starting the night with a call like that. Are you kidding me, ump? Are you kidding me? Henderson strikes out, and Kevin Brown is doing his best to maintain his composure on the broadcast. Your boy, the bird watcher, isn't as professional. That ump is garbage. Garbage. One and one the count on Adley Rutschman. Unbelievable. First batter of the game. Not even close. Rutschman hits one in the center over the glove of the second baseman for a base hit. A one-out single for Adley Rutschman. I swear to God, we better win this game tonight. Because your boy, the bird watcher, has never been this upset three pitches into a ball game. Unbelievable, this umpire. Who is it? Ryan Blackney. Ryan Blackney, you stink. Mountcastle at the plate. He fouls one off to the right. Folks, you know your boy, the bird watcher, is usually pretty even keel, at least at the beginning of the ball game. I like to set a nice, relaxing pace, you know? It's a pastime, this game. Here's a swing and a miss by Mountcastle in the count 0-2. Rutschman at first, one down. Just getting going here in the top of the first in Kansas City. Yeah, I need a lucky already. Called strike three inside. Two inches inside, called strike three on Ryan Mountcastle. Two outs in the inning on two called strike threes out of the zone. Did Reagans hit the target? Yes. Was it just an inch or two inside? Yes. Was it a strike? No. Was it on the heels of another awful called strike three? Yes. So should we have gotten the benefit of the doubt to maybe make up for that other call? Yes. But did we get it? No. Anthony Santander at the plate. Owen won the count. Unbelievable. Fouled off to the left. Unbelievable. What is going on? I, if, if I'm Brandon Hyde, I'm already tossed out of the game. I'm already out of the game. I'm already out of the game. I, I would have been tossed. Swing and a miss, and Santander strikes out. Three Oriole strikeouts. Two of them courtesy of the umpire. 
We go to the bottom of the first. Orioles nothing. Royals coming up. Unbelievable. 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 And that's another awful call. These umpires, man, every single day. That ball missed by two inches. I went high to show a little fire, though. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you guys. I mean, I guess Brandon Hyde is looking at like, look, if I, if I, if I get tossed this early, you know, this is a very important game. That's why your boy's so upset. This is a very important game. If we don't win today, our streak of consecutive uh, series without getting swept is going to be in serious jeopardy with Cole Irvin on the mound tomorrow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, folks. I hope you get a chance. Well, I don't know if I want you to see it or not. It might be too traumatic. And how many times a season? It's not like this is the only game, particularly to Gunnar Henderson. He has been hosed so many times this year. God. Oh, your boy needs a lucky. I'm sorry. This is the earliest. I'm having a lucky before the end of the first inning. Unbelievable. Janet's preaching, where's Earl Weaver when you need him? Janet, you got him right here. He's just biting his tongue as hard as possible. I want to tell these umpires where to stick their tomato plant, if you know what I mean. Unbelievable. I I'm eventually going to calm down. If we can get a lead and win the game, I'll calm down. Otherwise... I'm going to be mad for another 24 hours. All right. First pitch in the bottom. The first is fouled away. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> by Michael Garcia. Corbin Burns is on the mound, and we need him to throw lights out today. My goodness. Your boy about to have an aneurysm. One ball and one strike on Michael Garcia, hitting just 167, three homers and 12 RBI. This one's hit back and off of Burns, and then he misplays the ball, but he still is able to get Garcia. We got to make sure that play. What a crazy play. A comebacker. It bounced off Burns. He then slipped initially trying to pick up the ball. Still had time to recover on a bang-bang play at first. Yeah, that's my thing, Dennis. Are we going to get the kind of calls Reagans is getting? Because if we're getting those calls, Burns shouldn't have to throw a strike all night. He should just be hitting two inches off the plate all night long because apparently that's a strike. Brandon Hyde and the trainer wanted to check on Burns, but he told him, go on back in. I got this. That's what an ace does. One out. And the batter, Bobby Witt Jr., lifted in the air. Foul ground, long run for Urias, and he'll make the catch on the track in foul ground. So an easy out of Bobby Wood Jr., that's a big one. Two down, nobody on here in the bottom of the first. Would you believe that Corbin Burns is one out away from his first clean first inning of the season? He has given up one run in every start so far in the first. I don't want to call a jinx. By the way, that one was low and in, and it's a called strike. So we've got one makeup call as the umpire gives Burns a strike on a pitch low and in. So it's just the umpire that stinks. And now we do never mind, never mind, take it back. A high strike zone called a ball. On a fastball, one and one the count. So, yeah, I thought maybe we got a makeup call, but instead, the very next pitch, we get hosed again. One and one, low and in. Are you sure, Ump? What, do you need to see dirt 
pop up off the ground in order to be sure it's a, it's a, it's a ball? Two and one on Pascantino. And that one's laced in the center field. And Mullins goes into an awkward, um, excuse me, Mateo. I was going to say, goes into an awkward dive. That's not too Mullins-like. Well, that's because it's not Mullins. We got Jorge Mateo out there tonight. He was able to trap the ball and keep it in front of him, but it's a base hit for Pascantino, a two-out single. And that'll bring up Salvador Perez. Yeah, I might have to make Don a non-moderator at this point. I think Don's better at chatting. Not that Don can't mod, but the mod to non-mod ratio in chat right now is a little heavy. I'm worried people will come in and go, I don't know, am I allowed to talk? It seems like only mods can talk. <laughs> now, you guys are fine. You guys are doing great. Uh, Owen won the count here on Salvador Perez, hitting 324 on the season. And this is a low fastball hit on the ground foul off to the left. Your outfield is Hayes, Mateo, Santander left to right. In the infield, Urias at third, Gunner at short, Westberg at second, Mountcastle at first, and McCann is behind the plate. 0-2 on Perez, two down, runner at first, no score, bottom of the first. The pitch is low and away for ball one. Oh, Don, she's not crazy. She's not crazy. She's just, uh, you know. She walks to the beat of her own drum, as I like to say. 1-2 and two on Perez. And this one's low and away. Two balls and two strikes. Richard, it's going okay if it weren't for some of the worst umpiring in the first inning of a ball game I've ever seen. Hopefully the Orioles will get out of it without getting punished. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Perez is low for ball three. That'll run the count full now. And that means the runner at first base will take off as soon as Burns goes into his windup. The pitch. Lifted in the air. Right center. And Santander is there to make the catch. So the Royals, in spite of the umpire, do not score. We go to the second inning in a scoreless ball game. All right, your boy's trying to settle down. I just want to I just want to see surely somebody has uploaded What is this umpire's name again? This absolute joke of an umpire, Ryan Blackney. Ryan Blackney. Would anybody bother to tweet anything by his actual name? Ryan Blackney is quickly making himself one of the worst umpires in Major League Baseball. Ryan Blackney, you are a terrorist. Did you guys get Ryan Blackney tonight? Oh, here we go. The worst called game of the first half belongs to umpire Ryan Blackney. He missed 26 calls in the July 7th Brewers-Reds games for a correct call rate of only 85.1%. Blackney is currently ranked 86th out of the 90 umpires in correct call rate. Huh. Well, I don't know who said he was good this season, but apparently 19 games or whatever isn't big enough of a sample size. Blackney doing his best Angel Hernandez impersonation. Just awful. Yeah, I know. I know. Narniak, I totally agree. I don't want AI to take over either. But, And I also am a supporter of unions. But some unions take uh, what is, you know, at its origin a, a good idea and then start to exploit it, abuse it. And that's the deal with these umpires, with this umpires union. You're a made man once you get there. 
So there you go, folks. Twitter is everybody's letting you know about this guy. Unbelievable. All right, back underway here, top of the second. Jordan Westberg, first pitch swinging, and he misses on a pitch low and in by Cole Reagans. Westberg batting 313 at the moment. Swing and a miss. A changeup outside. And Westberg comes up empty. 0-2 the count, leading off the top of the second. No score in the ball game. And this one's lifted foul behind the plate. I mean, I guess you got to say, if it's close to the zone, you got to swing. I mean, I don't want to see another bad called strike. This one's lifted and going to drop in down the right field line by Westberg. It'll only go as a single. I thought maybe it was hit softly enough for him to make the turn. But still, what a lovely piece of hitting there on a pitch probably a few inches outside. Westberg reaches for it and serves it to the opposite field. And again, just a little bit more of a, if it was hit a little softer or a little harder, a little closer to the line, then that's extra bases. Here's Austin Hayes. And Westberg takes off on the first pitch, and Perez on the transfer to his throwing hand drops the ball. So Westberg steals second on the first pitch to Hayes. And I love it. Now Westberg in scoring position, and Hayes can have a productive at-bat here without necessarily getting a hit. If he can move Westberg over to third with only one out, He's done something. The 1-0 pitch is lifted in the air, foul, and Hayes has his helmet fall off. A la, a la Gunnar Henderson hitting his first career homer. The infield is straight away. Runner at second, nobody out. The 1-1 to Hayes is hit in the air to right center, or excuse me, right center. That's going to be a foul ball off to the right as Hayes' helmet falls off for the second straight swing. What's that all about? Hayes currently batting 095. Again, Austin, just put the ball in play, okay? He lays off the high fastball. Luckily for Hayes, that was about a foot high because he was in the middle of swinging, but he was able to stop it quickly because that pitch was so far away from the zone the 2-2 two -two. there's a breaking ball and he fights it off Hayes battling takes the helmet back off steps out for a little bit of a break Westberg is a dog he's at second base with nobody out the 2-2 two -two. Laid off, ball three. That one was outside. A lovely at bat right here from Austin Hayes. It has to be said, you'd love to see him cap it off but again with something productive. Six pitches into this at bat. Here comes number seven, the payoff pitch to Austin Hayes. Swung on, right field. And it's going to back up the right fielder. He has to leap over to make the catch. That ball nearly got over Hunter Renfro. Full extension with the glove as high as he could go in the air. And Hayes does have himself a productive out as that ball was hit deep to right field, allowing Westberg to easily tag and move up to third base. He could have walked to third base. Even though Renfro has one of the stronger arms out there. If you remember back in the uh, series at home, Renfro with a bullet throw to get Rutschman trying to stretch a single into what would have been a double against just about anybody else. So here we go. Now we're getting into that bottom part of the order, and we need somebody to produce. Runner third, one down with Ramon Urias at the plate. He's Owen, got an 0 1 He's got an 0 1 count. Let me get it out. This one's low and in, but one ball and one strike. 
Your boy needs more coffee. PAS is in the house. The Mets have beaten the Dodgers again. I love it. By the way, the infield is pulled up right on the edge of the infield grass. Swing and a miss by Urias. One ball and two strikes. So again, folks, the situation. Top of the second scoreless ball game. Runner at third with one out. It's up to Ramon Urias to find a way to get him in. The one-two pitch is taken inside, two and two. 98-mile-an-hour fastball from Reagans, who's already up to 27 pitches. And I like, I like that it's 27 pitches already with one out here. The two-two. This one's hit on the ground, and a fair ball! Down the left field line, past the diving glove of the third baseman and into the corner. Urias will coast into second base with an RBI double. And the Orioles have taken a 1-0 lead here in the top of the second inning. Ramon Urias gets some. There you go. Your boy, the bird watcher, has been saying all along it's time to get a bottom of the order with Urias and Hayes in there. They're getting things done. <laughs> hey, we're we're on the board. We are on the board. And that'll bring up James McCann with Urias now at second base. Still only one out and a breaking ball in the dirt. And we got Mateo on deck. The big bats at the bottom of the Oriole lineup. By the way, with that hit, Urias... And I'm only talking about that hit, not the any other, other hits he's had. Just that hit. More production the entire uh, Major League career of Jackson Holiday to date. You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. Holiday has one single. <laughs> and this one's fouled back. McCann with a one-two count. And the Orioles are making Reagan's work. I love it. Let's get him up to 40 pitches by the second inning. Urias, second base. Here's a line drive, base hit left field. And that one is going to take a while to get to the left fielder. Urias rounds third. He comes in to score an RBI single for James McCann. Another base hit. Four hits for the Orioles already off Reagan's. It's two to nothing. McCann keeps the line moving by reaching out for a breaking ball and pulling it in the left field. I told you the bottom of this Orioles lineup was top notch, didn't I? <laughs> God, they needed a game like this. How about a game where Hayes has three hits, Urias has three hits? Let's wake some of these guys' bats up. And maybe we won't feel so pressing a need to make a move with the roster here. Oh, boy, what happened to the stream? Where'd your stream go for your boy? Uh-oh. There we go. All right, Mateo at the plate, and his first pitch is fouled back. 96 miles an hour from Reagan's. 2 nothing Baltimore here in the top of the second. Oh, ho, ho, it's magic, you know, Baltimore Orioles. There's a called strike, 0-2 on Mateo. And, folks, we got to talk about likes and subs tonight, especially subs, because there is a milestone for your boy, the bird watcher, on the horizon. This one's fouled back by Mateo. And the count remains 0-2. Well, let's take a look at how many people are here right now. I think it's a pretty small gathering. Well, 71 people. Folks, 70 people here right now, 23 likes. Let's get up to 35. What do you say? That's only half of you. Only half of you have to hit the like button as Mateo strikes out on a pitch in the dirt for out number two. 
A strikeout for Mateo, two down. McCann still at first base and back to the top of the order for Gunnar Henderson. That's right, folks. I'm giving you content, giving you play-by-play -play and commentary on Orioles baseball. All for free. No ads, no nothing. Here's a line drive, base hit right field. Henderson will keep the line moving. As McCann, without too much speed, will have to stop at second base. First and second with two down for Adley Rutschman. Folks, I'm asking you to hit that like button to help out the channel. It's a new channel, and the only way it's going to grow is with the help of the YouTube algorithm. And YouTube loves to see likes on videos. It lets them know that the content that they're pushing out there to other people is worth watching. I don't get a penny off of it. It's merely, or I'm not even doing it for the clout. I'm just doing it to try to get more baseball fans to find the channel. Rutschman at the plate, two down, two on, and a 1-0 pitch is in the dirt. 2-0 and on Rutschman. We've lost six subs? We've lost six? Wow. Okay, folks. I guess we're gonna we're gonna have to dig deep tonight. Apparently, six people checked out since yesterday. Apparently, losing yesterday just was too much for some people to take. Two and zero to Rutschman, and that one's fouled back. I mean, what in the world? Reagan's now on 40 pitches. Fantastic. It's going to be tough for him to go more than five innings. Swing and a miss. Rutschman swings over that pitch. And the count even up at two and two. Rutschman already with a hit tonight. Up there for the second time in as many innings. Urias, or excuse me, McCann at second. Henderson at first. I'm a little off today. What does that mean? <laughs> In what way, Seeley? I mean, is that constructive criticism? Because if it is, maybe you want to be a little more specific. Still two and two on Rutschman as he fouls this one away. Some folks would argue I'm a little off every day, and that's what makes me me. This one is hit up in the air and fouled off again. Don't be too obsessed with the subs. Uh, well, I've mentioned it a grand total of once in the ball game. I've been streaming for 40 minutes, and I've mentioned the subs once. So there you go. If once every 40 minutes is too much, your boy, the bird watcher, will simply have to say sorry, but that's going to be sort of the norm. So there you go. <laughs> Great. Feeling the love from chat. Two and two the count. Two down. Rutschman hanging in there. I've lost some subs. Okay, it happens. This one's off the plate outside, and the count runs full. Folks, I'm here to call an Orioles game, every game, no matter what the sub count is, I'm going to keep doing it, but like anybody with a brand new YouTube channel trying to grow it, I'm excited to see it grow. That's all it is. Here's a line drive up the middle of base hit. That should score another run. McCann will come around after two or down, able to get the jump. Adley Rutschman with an RBI single. The Orioles keep the line moving, make it six hits here. We're still in the second inning. Orioles three, Kansas City nothing. Okay, got you guys. Again, I think I, I got it all under control. I think I've explained myself as well as I can. I'm spending 95% of the time focused on calling the ball game as best I can and provide a community for people to hang out. This one's fouled off by Ryan Mountcastle. The other 5% of the time, yeah, I'm going to bring up subs and likes because that's sort of part of the job. That's what people on YouTube do. 
And I can't argue with the results. I can't argue with the way I've approached it. So far, so good. The 0-1 to Mountcastle is low. One ball and one strike. Runners at first and third. Three runs in already. <clears throat> See, Lee, the numbers would say that there is faith. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Now, if you want to, <coughs> if you want to talk about my other channel that I've been running for a year and a half, uh, yeah, there's there's things to be concerned about, but I'm fine here. Here's an inside-out swing, and it'll go foul off to the right. Count remains one and two on Ryan Mountcastle. Continues to mash against lefties, hitting 304 off of them so far this season. Thirty-eighth pitch of the inning is lined foul down the right field line. Reagans has gotta be running out of gas. A chance for Mountcastle to blow this game wide open. 39th pitch of the inning coming. And it's hit up the middle, backhanded, but dropped by the second baseman, and he has no play. Henderson will come in to score. I'm not sure if that's going to be a hit or an error. It was bobbled out there, but it was also hit back up the middle and backhanded, going to a knee. It was not, an, not a routine play. And according to the scorecard here, indeed, Mountcastle will get credit for an infield single. So an RBI single for Ryan Mountcastle and the Orioles now lead four to nothing. Here's Anthony Santander. First pitch to him is a called strike on a breaking ball outside edge. Santander 0 for 1 tonight. His average still right around the Mendoza line. 4 nothing Baltimore. Looking for more. This one's drilled. Left field. Get up. Get up. That ball hits off the base of the wall. Rutschman will come in to score. Mountcastle held at third base. Make it an RBI double for Anthony Santander. We have batted around. It's 5 to nothing. We have batted around. Get in. Oh, we needed an inning like this. Early and big. One out, I think. One out what? There's two outs. <laughs> it's on the screen, and I've said it. Here's Westbrook for the second time in the inning, and he takes low and in. Again, there's two outs. It's on the scoreboard. And it's coming from your boy's voice. Westberg already with a base hit, a stolen base, and a run scored. Now up there with second and third, swing and a miss on a foul tip, actually. One ball and one strike. Reagans is not going to make it far tonight, you would think. Five runs already, 56 pitches, and that one's in the dirt. But with the runners at second and third, and the ball in front of Perez, no advancement from anybody. You can't read it. Okay. Well, again, there's two outs. All right. All right. <laughs> the two and one on Westberg is swung on a missed. Two and two. And there is activity in the Royals' bullpen. Sour. Sour. He pitched in uh, the game last night. This one is off the plate outside. And the count runs full on Westberg and groans from the crowd here at Kauffman Stadium. 
They are sitting through a rough inning. We, this has been about a half an hour of the Orioles at the plate. Next pitch is line foul down the left field corner. Nice play there. Oh, well, I thought the ball girl had caught it. I guess the ball got trapped into the net there. Forty eighth pitch of the inning coming from Cole Reagans to Jordan Westberg. And this is up the middle. A base hit. That'll score two more. Mountcastle comes in. Santander behind him. The Orioles are killing it. Westberg with his second hit of the inning. And it's seven to nothing. And that'll do it for Cole Reagans. Get him out of here. And all of that frustration and pain and suffering the umpire caused me in the first inning or so of the game. That is long gone. We said, forget it. We'll stop taking pitches. We'll just swing at everything and get ourselves, I don't know, nine hits before the end of two innings. Seven runs, nine hits, and Reagans is finished. We have a pitching change. Just enough time for your boy to ask you to like and subscribe. <laughs> That's right. We've got 80 people in the chat right now. Why don't we think about getting that like count up to, I don't know, 30, 35? All you got to do is hit that thumb. It's right below your screen. There's no commitment. There is no obligation. And no salesman will visit your home. You'll be helping out the channel. And uh, that's all you got to do. Pretty simple. Tap that like button, folks. I'd appreciate it. And while we're talking about it, since I am completely obsessed in everything, let's talk about the goal to hit 500 subs before this series is over. We are well on pace after last night. And for those that are excited with the growth of the channel, you should be happy to be following along. We're at 466, 34 away. If we can average 17 a night, we'll get there. We will get there, folks. So 17 a night, that your boy's doing some quick math. Let's try to get to 483 if we can tonight, folks. 483. And folks, look at this steady climb. You might tell me, hey, enough about the subs, but it's working. The only days where there aren't any subs are days when the Orioles don't play. Otherwise, it's been a nice steady climb. Let's keep it going. Seven nothing Orioles. Reagans throws 62 pitches. He's out of the ball game. And again, it's sour on the mound. Matt Sauer, he's made six appearances so far with an ERA of a flat three. Six innings of work, opponents hitting 280 off of him. He's actually issued more walks than he has strikeouts. And this one's low and away for ball two. So Sauer, uh, according to the numbers, not the Royals' best pitcher, but that would explain why they're bringing him in here. It's already a bit of a blowout here in the early going. And they want to use their high leverage arms for better situations than this. Hayes fouls this one off to the left. And the count will move to two balls and one strike. Hayes 0 for 1. He flew out to deep right field his last time up. It was a productive at bat. It's his second time at the plate in the inning. This one is low and in, and the count moves to three and one. Seven runs on nine hits here in the second inning for the Orioles. And the pitch is inside for ball four. So Sauer comes in, and... He only sours the mood of this Kansas City crowd, which is dead silent right now. 
I mean, you can hear the cotton candy guy begging somebody to buy some cotton candy. Two down, two on for Urias. First pitch is low. Sauer can't find the zone. Urias had that big RBI hit his last time up, which was this inning. And this one's up and in. Urias has to back out of the way. 2-0 and oh, and Sauer cannot find the plate. Wow, this is turning ugly for all the right reasons if you're an Orioles fan. Again, this inning about a half hour old. Here's a swing and a miss. This one was a little out, well, probably about three, four inches outside Urias. With a bit of a flailing swing there. Two and one the count. Seven runs in. This one's tapped to the shortstop. Witt Jr. will go to second for the force in the inning, mercifully for the Royals comes to an end but not before Baltimore bats around and then some they put up seven runs we go to the bottom of the second touchdown Orioles Baltimore seven Kansas City nothing Raven seven Chiefs nothing take that Taylor Swift yeah I need an easy night tonight I, I want to relax and watch us uh, cruise to a victory. Now, it's a long way to go, so there's no cruising yet. But we got Corbin Burns out there, and the last thing I think Corbin Burns is going to do is blow up this lead. He might give up one or two, but I think he's going to give us six or seven innings, and we'll still have ourselves, at worst, a lead uh, where even a grand slam won't help. What an inning, my friend. What an inning. How are you guys doing down there in the chat? Yeah, take the pressure off. Burns just needs to go out there and deal. He looked good in the first inning. Again, he did give up give up a hit, but that was the first, first inning of the season for Burns where he didn't give up a run. He has always given up one run in the first until today. So, how about his first uh, shutout of the season? We need Holiday, Mateo, or Urias to step up. Can't keep having automatic outs when they bat. It's good. Urias got a hit. Yes, little Kirkio, it is good. And, guys, I'm rooting for everybody on this team. There's nobody on this team that I think is hot, stinking garbage. Everybody has something they can do. My only thing with Urias is that he doesn't really do anything for us that we don't have somebody already better that can do it, if you know what I mean. But if they're going to throw Urias in there against lefties uh, to platoon with Holiday for now, I mean, any any reason to replace Holiday's bat with another bat is fine by me right now. All right, for the Royals, MJ Melendez will lead it off. He'll be followed by Nelson Velasquez and Michael Massey. This is the five, six, seven batters in the lineup. Melinda's hitting 242. And he takes a called strike that's way low. Wow. I mean, folks, I'll call it both ways. I've, I'm a Royals fan right now. I'm mad. But as an Orioles fan, I can only go, well, that evens out one of the other calls. That one's in the dirt, and the count is one and one on Melinda's. This umpire. I'm telling you, don't take any pitches anywhere close to the zone. You better be swinging. And that one's lined back up the middle. Nice pick there by Henderson playing right behind the bag at second. And Melendez is retired. Seven nothing Baltimore. Look at that. The sun's not even all the way up. Your boy's loving it. One out here for Nelson Velasquez. First pitch. 
is a fastball for a called strike. Velasquez hitting 295, a couple of homers, seven RBI. One for three in the series. This one's low and away, one ball and one strike. One out. Nobody on. The Orioles up seven here early. They've already knocked Reagans out of the ball game. This was supposed to be a big pitching matchup. Swing and a miss. Velasquez. Nothing but air on that swing. And the one two from Burns is hit back to him. Burns will flip it to first. Two outs here in the second. Burns is moving. Your boy might be in the mood for a lucky. Two down, and that'll bring up Michael Massey, second baseman. He got into the lineup in last night's ball game. He was just called up, making his first start with the Royals this season. Had a couple of hits, including a double. And this one's fouled off to the right. One ball and one strike on Michael Massey. Two down, nobody on. The 1-1 one, one is in the dirt. Here comes the 2 1 now, and it's swung on and missed. Nice location there by Burns. Just a little bit outside at the bottom of the zone. And the 2 2 is chopped foul off to the right. Another 2-2 two -two to Massey is hit on the ground right side. Holiday, excuse me, <laughs> Holiday is not playing tonight. Westberg, is it Westberg at second? Yeah. He flips it over to Mountcastle for the out, and the inning is over. An easy inning for Burns. We're through two. It's Baltimore 7, Kansas City nada. All right. Your boy is going to take a break with Lucky. And needs to close the curtain behind him because the light is too bright. I've made that determination. And I'll be right back. Folks, again, a, remind you, a reminder that the Orioles Birdwatcher Channel is brought to you by the Orioles Birdwatcher Channel. That's right. This channel has no sponsors. It just has me, the Birdwatcher, running this whole gosh darn show on his lonesome way out here on the other side of the planet. So while we wait for this next inning to start, I figured I'd sell you on a subscription, a free sub to the Orioles Bird Watcher channel. Think about it today. Thank you. All right. Top of the third we go. 
McCann will lead things off for the Orioles. Sauer out there for his first full inning of work. McCann has an RBI and a run scored. Came in the previous inning. This one's a Baltimore chop over the mound, back of second, and McCann unable to get down the line. He'll be thrown out four to three on the ground out. One away here in the top of the third. This is going great. Here's Jorge Mateo, first pitch has pop foul behind the plate. Whoops, let me get you this scoreboard. There you go. The 0-1 is low. 1-1 one -on, -one on Mateo. Seeley, I suppose you could. This one's hit sharply. Dropped by Witt Jr. Picks it up. Long throw. Got him. Wow. That's all you need to know about the arm strength of Bobby Witt Jr. That's Jorge Mateo racing down the line on a ground ball in the hole at short. Witt Jr. had a momentary bobble, but still able to fire across and get Mateo in time. Two down for Gunnar Henderson. Don C., I realize that. That's because your boy's enjoying a lucky strike as this first pitch clips the top of the zone, but the umpire says ball one. So now we know the umpire is giving an inch or two off the plate, but is not giving you the top of the zone. He'll give you the, I don't know what he'll give you, but it's 2-0 and oh now on Henderson. Two down, nobody on, and the 2-0 to Gunner is off the plate outside. Your boy had to wait a moment to make that call because he can't figure out this umpire and what he might do on pitches anywhere near the edge of the zone. 3-0 the count, and that's off the plate for ball four. A four-pitch walk to Gunner Henderson here, and that'll bring up Adley Rutschman. Third time through the order for the Orioles here in the third inning. Rutschman already with a pair of hits tonight. His average currently at 316. First pitch to him is bounced in the dirt for ball one. One and zero on Rutschman, runner at first, two down, and the pitch is hit in the air. Going to be in play for the left fielder. MJ Melendez makes the catch, and the inning is over. The Orioles get a runner on, but he will be left out there. We go to the bottom of the third. Baltimore seven, Kansas City nothing. And it's down the middle for a ball. Yeah, it's like watching Frank Drebin behind the plate call balls and strikes. Strike two. All right, your boy's back. Oh, I got to close the curtain. Okay, hello there.
How are we doing? Any more uh, tweets about this umpire? Oh, his strike zone. Yeah, there's a ball. That's a ball right there, folks. That was the ball to Henderson. I'm, look at this pitch. That's ball one to Henderson. <laughs> this, this umpire. Yeah, there's the, that's his actual strike zone tonight. Nice work there by Josh. I've watched Blackney miss four calls already behind the plate in the first inning alone. Dude is channeling Angel Hernandez. Everybody loves to bring up Angel. So do I. He's awful. <laughs> okay. We are underway here for the bottom of the third. And Burns... First pitch is off the plate for ball one. Who's up at the plate? This is lift. It's Hunter Renfro, and this one's lifted in the air to center field for Mateo. Easy out. One out here in the third. Kyle Isbell up now. This is his first at bat of the ball game. The Orioles have had some batters come up to hit three times already. Isbell up for the first time. And strike one on Isbell. Next pitch is outside, one and one. Holiday has done nothing except sit on the bench while the rest of the team scores runs on getting hits. The 1-1 one -one is a called strike. Nice breaking ball there on the outside edge from Burns. Popped up on the infield, Urias. We'll make the catch. Two away here in the third. Burns is cruising on 33 pitches at the moment. The one weird thing is he hasn't struck anybody out yet. He only had three strikeouts against the Royals and the first time he faced them back in the uh, second series of the season which for him was his lowest strikeout uh, total for a start in his career. 0-1 here now. Make it 0-2 on Michael Garcia. O2 pitch outside one and two. I've actually heard from a lot of the sports shows talking about Angel that one of the reasons he still has a job is because of much flack he gets. He's not the worst at calling balls and strikes. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's bad. There's a called strike three. Burns dots the outside edge. Garcia strikes out. Another easy inning for Burns. He's faced one batter over the minimum through three. We go to the fourth inning. It's the Orioles seven, the Royals nothing. Yes, one, two, three inning. That's what that was. Yeah, I think Angel Hernandez is just, you know, the poster boy. Somebody's got to be the poster boy. And, and I actually think the umpires like the fact that whenever there's talk about bad umpiring, the focus is always on the same one guy. It's like Angel Hernandez is taking the heat for all the other poor to extremely bad umpires out there because he's just he's got the name. He's got the tag. So I think the umpires like that, and I think that might be part of the reason why they don't, even if within their own union they wanted to ax him, they're, they're like, well, if he's going to sit here and be the scapegoat for everything we do wrong, we're never going to be perfect. 
Let's just let him be the scapegoat. He doesn't seem to care. Folks, let's get up to 470. What do you say? Come on, folks. It's a slow night on the sub count. Your boy, the bird watcher, is here giving you a seven-run lead. What more can he do for you? We're on the road to 500. Get in. 500 subs. We are not stopping till we get there. Come hell or high water. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Hernandez also is one to quickly toss people out of the ball game. That's another feature of his uh, reputation. I think that's an addition. There we go. Thank you, number 469. One more to 470, folks, as we're about to get started here in the top of the fourth. Ryan Mountcastle at the plate, and he takes a called strike. Matt Sauer out there for another inning of work. Mount Castle one for two so far tonight. This one's way off the plate. One ball and one strike. The Orioles have out hit the Royals so far nine to one through the first three innings. Called strike one and two. Watched Jim Palmer yesterday give some very good feedback about Holiday and his struggles at the plate. I believe Jackson will be fine. Check out the interview if you haven't. Yeah, I did. Uh, the, the interview he did with uh, Ryan Ripken. There's a call to strike three. Mountcastle goes down looking, leading off the top of the fourth. I mean, look, only time is going to tell what happens with Jackson Holiday. Whether or not it makes sense to give him some time in the minors, whether or not it makes sense to let him work it out in the majors. Either way, until things start improving, it's hard to watch. I think we can all agree on that. This one's lifted in the air, to deep right center or right field in the corner. It bounces up, hits the railing at the top of the wall there. It'll be a double for Santander. As he drops one into the deep right field corner. A one out double. That might have been an automatic double. It sort of bounced into the stands and back out onto the field, but it was a two bagger either way. And here's Jordan Westberg. And this one's fouled back behind the plate. Seeley is showing 472 subs. Thank you so much, everybody. We are on the road to 500. You're going to want to be one of the original 500. For, you know you have the Indianapolis 500? Let's make this the Annapolis 500. You know, Annapolis, a sister city of Baltimore. Let's throw Annapolis into the mix. Let's get to the Annapolis 500. Narniak reporting. Zach Wheeler with a no-no in Philly through seven innings. Here's a comebacker to Sowers. Sower throws to first for the out. Santander stays at second base. There's two down now here in the top of the fourth. Sean is seeing 469. Well, no matter what the sub count is, it's not yet 500, folks. So get on in. Austin Hayes at the plate. And he lifts one foul out of play. So with this comfortable lead at the moment, what I really want to see is some good at-bats from the bottom of this order. Hayes, Urias. Hayes pops this one up. 
Perez will have a look, but it's back into the stands. Ah, well, that would explain it. The White Sox. Whew. They are not good, are they? Oh, and two on Hayes. Santander at second. The two down. The pitch is outside. One ball and two strikes. Here's a ground ball. Third baseman Garcia has it over to first. In time. Santander has a double, but he's left out at second base. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Orioles seven, Royals a nothing. All right. So a second inning of no runs for Baltimore. That's fine. We got our seven. Maybe we can add a couple of more along the way. All I care about is keeping the zeros on the board for Kansas City. Do, 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 do. We're about to hit 40 likes in the chat. Every like helps this channel get more exposure on the YouTube al algorithm, folks. I'd appreciate it if you took the time while you're here, especially during a break in the action, to just tap that little thumb right below your screen. Help your boy grow the channel. This coffee is hitting good this morning. It's hitting good. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. Let's see who we got due up in the bottom of the fourth. Should be, uh, let's see, Bobby Witt Jr., Vinny Pascantino, and Sally Perez. So the Royals are sending up the heart of their order. In the bottom of the fourth, if Burns can get through this inning clean, then we should be in very good shape to get into the late innings with a nice, healthy lead here. Okay, we are set to get ready for the bottom of the fourth. And the first pitch is off the plate for ball one to Bobby Witt. 0 for 1 so far tonight. He fouled out back in the first. And here's a breaking ball for a called strike, 1-1. One one. Here's a swing and a miss. A slider breaking down and away from Witt Jr. Burns is throwing the kitchen sink tonight. One and two on Witt, leading off the bottom of the fourth. Here's a swing and a ground ball to short. Henderson will have to hurry as one does when Witt is running down the line. And he throws out the speedy Bobby Witt Jr. So one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Always good to keep Witt off the bases. Okay, Vinny Pascantino at the plate. He tried to check the swing. The home plate umpire said, you went around. No need to appeal. Pascantino has a base hit. The only hit of the game so far for the Royals came back in the first inning. Swing and a miss. On a pitch at the bottom of the zone on the outside corner. Oh. 
Infield shaded for Pascantino to pull. This one's in the dirt, one and two. That's right, Parkery. We got a seven spot on the board. And a one two pitch to Pascantino is hit on the ground foul. On the road to 500 subs, folks, get in on the action. This is the global internet home for Orioles baseball coverage. Orioles bird watcher popped up. Short left field, Urias going out. Henderson behind him, and Henderson crashes into Urias. Urias holds on to the ball. My goodness. They both have a laugh about it. Gunnar Henderson, who took an angle where he came up right behind Urias and basically gave him a bear hug as Urias went to the ground. <laughs> and there'll probably be some interesting photos from that play. Two down, nobody on for Salvador Perez. And that's a first pitch strike on the inside edge from Burns. Burns is on 47 pitches right now. He's doing fantastic. Here's a looper in the center, and it'll drop in front of Mullins for a two-out single for Perez. So leave it up to me to say Burns is doing fantastic, and then a second later give up a base hit. But it's a two-out single. And Burns is still in very good shape. Perez, extremely slow on the base paths. Here's MJ Melendez, 0 for 1 so far. And a big swing and a miss on a breaking ball in the dirt. Burns about to throw pitch number 50 now. And it's hit on the ground, foul, right in front of the plate. Might have gotten a piece of Melendez. MJ hit a three-run homer. That was last night when the Orioles brought in Keegan Aiken to relieve Dean Kramer, brought in the lefty to face the lefty. I believe that's how it went down, right? Didn't We brought in a lefty for the specific purpose to face Melendez, and he hit a three-run homer. Okay, so apparently my subs are going down. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> it's... Again, there's no stopping the Orioles bird watcher train. If it's a night where there aren't many subs, that's okay. It's a long season, and I can't be uh, more pleased with the progress so far. I'm extremely uh, pleased and humbled. I was not expecting such a great turnout to date. It's only been three weeks and a couple of days. This one's low, two and two the count on Melendez. Two down, runner at first. Orioles ahead, seven to nothing here in Kansas City. And the two two is hit on the ground. Mountcastle will field it and take it to the bag himself to win the inning. The Royals get a double. Was it a double? They got a runner on base, but he doesn't score. We go to the fifth. Seven nothing Orioles. We're cruising. We are cruising. Now we're set up to try to win the series tomorrow, and it's gonna be gonna be a battle. Gonna be tough. Cole Irvin scheduled a start. He has not had a good outing yet this season. 
have to face Seth Lugo, who's been nothing but good. Sub-2 ERA, 3-0 and record. Yeah, Sean, his curve hasn't exactly been... Uh, but I don't know if it's by design or not. There's a couple of uh, curves have hit right on the edge of the zone. But, yeah, there have been a few that have broken so far off the plate that batters haven't even ha uh, had a reason to offer at it. But in general, Burnsy looking good tonight. Glad Reagan's had an off game. Boy, so am I. Especially after that Marsh start last night again alec marsh haunting me in my dreams knowing that we then had to face reagan's the next day but uh that's baseball for you john means is likely to replace cole urban yep that's a situation m stone that's being tracked every day since uh basically they said john means was quote unquote starting his own spring training about halfway through the Orioles spring training putting him on about a one month track to return so yeah he's probably only about a week away one more rehab start I think before the call up we've also got Albert Suarez in the mix while Tyler Wells is down and if Suarez continues to pitch well I think Suarez is going to keep his spot over Cole Irvin as well. Here's a called strike to Ramon Urias leading off the top of the fifth with Nick Anderson, the new pitcher out here for the Royals. Anderson making his ninth appearance of the season. Swinging a foul back behind the plate, 0-2. ERA of 5.14, opponents hitting 286 off of him. Seven innings of work. He's walked five guys in those seven innings. This one's hit on the ground. Shortstop Witt over to first in time. Yeah, Means still has something to prove down in Norfolk. I brought that up last night. He got shelled in his last uh, rehab start. Only got one out, so... Yeah, I mean, the emergence of Albert Suarez, whether or not it was just a game of his life emergency start situation, you've seen it happen before. Here's a ground ball by McCann on his first pitch. Witt in the outfield grass will throw him out. So a quick out there. Anderson with two outs on four pitches here in the fifth. That'll bring up Jorge Mateo. Yeah, if Albert Suarez can uh, be anything like he was in that first start. And we've, we've got one more extra arm in, in the mix. Here's a called strike to Mateo. And Suarez looked great. Velocity was there. Command was there. Moving uh, pitches and around the zone, mixing him up nicely. This one's fouled back by Mateo, and it's 0-2. Two. two down, nobody on, top of the fifth. 7-0 Baltimore. Anderson out on the mound in relief of Sear. Or Sour, excuse me. And this is another ground ball to Witt. Witt's been busy the past couple of innings. He throws out Mateo. And that'll do it. We are halfway through this one, folks. Orioles 7, Kansas City nothing. Yeah, Grayson is, is certainly, uh, you know, maturing into the ace that we would hope him to be. We'll see how his numbers look at the end of the season, but I got a feeling he's going to be in the conversation for a Cy Young. Maybe top 10, maybe top five votes. We'll see. I do hope John Means can come back and be of use to the Orioles. I, I'm a big John Means fan.
But it is strange how there's all this sort of explanation and don't worry about it for a guy like Jackson Holiday. But John Means goes and has a bad rehab start or two, and it's suddenly like, well, is he any good anymore? Well, you know, boy, you're willing to give Jackson Holiday like 12 straight bad games. Maybe we should give Means the benefit of the doubt. Give him another start or two down there to try to get things straight. Yeah, I mean, this will be the last season for Means. It's the last season of his contract. So, yeah. And, you know, it might wind up where he's uh, going to be a long guy in the pen, and that's fine, too. We're going to figure it out. As long as we don't get destroyed by injuries, we're going to have enough arms, I think. Okay, bottom of the fifth and Burns, first pitch. There's that curveball. Not in the zone, but broke beautifully. Got Velasquez to swing and miss at it. 0-1 the count on Nelson Velasquez, who's 0-1 tonight. And another breaking ball swung on a missed. Sean, there's two curves out of the zone, but I got to tell you, I think Burns wanted them where they were. Owen two on Velasquez, leading off the bottom of the fifth. The pitch. And this time, Velasquez won't chase. Okay, well, the Orioles' Masson team is flashing up a stat involving the curveball. Basically, breaking down how Burns' curve isn't as effective now as it was at the beginning of the season. I mean, I'm only looking at this at bat, but I've seen two thrown. They look pretty good to me. He's just not getting swings and misses on him as much as he used to. But at the same time, his strikeouts are down all the way across the board. This one's outside in the count two and two. We can debate whether Means is good anymore all day long. What can't be debated is after all the bad years, he deserves to be here. Hey, absolutely, Sean. I want a spot with for Means. As long as he's healthy, I know he can help the team out in some way. And, yeah, through all the years he went through for us, going out there and winning ball games, would love to see him a part of the postseason and hopefully uh, some Orioles magic. This one is a called strike three, and it's a low pitch. Velasquez is mad. And, well, Kansas City, look, I understand. I'm not going to sit here and point and laugh. I, I understand. You have every reason to be mad. That was nowhere near a strike. Not even close. That was ankle high by the time it got into McCann's glove. My goodness, this umpire is garbage. Velasquez strikes out looking. And at least the calls are starting to even out. That's the best I can say. 1-0 on Massey, and the next pitch is fouled off. One ball and one strike. 7 nothing Baltimore here in the bottom of the fifth. The Orioles with all seven runs in the second inning. An absolute barrage as they batted around. I think they sent uh, 11 or 12 guys to the plate. I think 11. This one is low and away. A, two balls and a strike on Michael Massey. And the 2-1 is hit hard, but caught by Mountcastle on a knee. He makes the catch on a line drive to first base by Massey. Two down here in the fifth. Zach Wheeler's no-no is no-mo. 
No mo no no for Zach Wheeler. And here's Hunter Renfro at the plate, and he looks at a called strike. Renfro lined out back on the third, 0 for 1. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2 on Renfro. Two down here in the fifth. Nobody on. Holiday needs to pick up the ball. He. Uh, I'm not sure what, it must be a typo. He can't get sent back to AAA anymore. Well, he hasn't been sent back to AAA once. <laughs> you work your way up to the minors, and then you get your, up to the bigs. You haven't been sent back once yet. So I don't know about any more. He's yet to go down once. One and two the count on Renfro, and a check swing, a tag, and then they appeal, but no swing. Two and two the count on Renfro. Here's a tapper off behind the plate by Renfro to stay alive. Still two and two on, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> two and two the count on Hunter Renfro. This one's low and outside and the count goes full. Yeah, Holiday keeps striking out. I my thoughts on Jackson Holiday have been well documented. I I feel like I have to limit how much I talk about it because I don't want to upset fans. This one's popped up off the end of the bat by Renfro in his center. Mateo drifting in the right center will make the catch to win the inning. We are through five. Burns, no runs on two hits through five innings. The Orioles in command. We head to the six, seven, nothing Baltimore. Mount Castle. I love it, Matt. I love the combo emoji for Mountain Castle. Mount Castle. I love it. Folks, let's take a check. I know it's been a slow night. I mean, let's go. 470. There you go. I'm really hoping we can get to like 480 because I was hoping tomorrow we'd get to 500. Folks, let's make a push. Come on. Aren't you excited about this season? The Orioles are about to tie up this series and go for the win tomorrow. Corbin Burns looking fantastic. The offense top to bottom. Everybody pitching in back in that second inning. Defense looks good. What's not to love? If you subscribe, here's what happens. Absolutely nothing. There's no commitment, no obligation, and no salesman will visit your home. All it does is uh, put my little uh, channel down in the corner of your home preference page. I won't bother you down there. I'll just be right there for your convenience whenever you want to check in on some Orioles baseball. So go ahead and subscribe today. Thank you. Mount Castle is a very cool name. Even in the world of baseball, where there's always cool names wherever you look, like Coco Crisp, even in Amongst baseball names, Mount Castle is a really cool name. It just sounds strong. It sounds strong. You got a mountain and a castle all in one. I mean, if he was on Game of Thrones, he would win the throne. I don't care what anybody says. Spooky, I like your prediction. Angel Zerpa, a lefty, is now out here for the Royals to start the sixth inning. This will be his ninth appearance of the season. Top of the order, due up for Baltimore. Here's Gunner, and he looks at ball one. 94 mile an hour fastball from Zerpa. Henderson one for two with a walk. He singled and scored. Off the plate, two and zero. Oh.
Richard, I love the uh, I I love the thought, but there's no way I'm getting that many. There is a call to strike the gunner and the count two and two. If I hit one thousand by the All Star break, I'd be doing a dance. In fact, before tonight, on pace to hit a thousand by June. This is low and away. Three and one on Gunnar Henderson, leading off the top of the sixth. So yeah, maybe by sometime next season. <laughs> and there's a called strike, bottom of the zone, outside corner. Count runs full on Henderson. Folks, the reason why I'm so excited to, to get to, you know, that milestone and here's a ground ball base hit in the left field henderson with a leadoff single here in the top of the sixth he's now two for three with a walk it's just that once once i get to like a thousand subscribers i, I can take my foot off the gas and just sort of allow the channel to grow organically without too much uh input i believe me i've I feel awkward talking about, hey, hit the subscribe button because it's, you know, I get it. I watch plenty of YouTube myself. I don't want to be inundated with that sort of thing. This one is inside to Adley Rutschman for ball one. But for a live stream channel, you folks got to remember, this isn't the kind of channel where people are going to tune in and watch a video over and over and watch the view count rise up into the tens of thousands hundreds of thousands this is a live stream it it really needs support game after game in order for it to sort of establish itself in the youtube universe does that make any sense here's a called strike to rutschman in the count two and one so that's the whole reason folks just figured i'd explain that we've got a nice comfortable lead the kind of lead where you can sit back and maybe talk something not involving the game for a moment. Henderson at first. The 2-1 to Rutschman is lying foul down the left field corner. The ball girl there unhappy that she didn't make the catch on the fly. It's Adley Rutschman at the plate. Gunnar Henderson at first. Nobody down, top of the sixth. Rutschman hitting from the right side for the first time tonight. And that's a called strike three. And that was actually a strike. So credit to the umpire for a called strike three that was actually a strike. That one was on the low inside corner to Rutschman. Booty Smacker 513 checking in. Here's Ryan Mountcastle. First pitch is high for ball one. There goes Don C. With every new city comes more subs. Yeah, again, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know if the pace will keep up if for how long. I really don't know. What I do know is that one thing is for sure, this channel was needed. There's one thing I can look at the uh, analytics, and it tells me that there's a l hundreds and hundreds of people returning to watch the game from the previous night. So people are showing up and returning. This one's just a bit high to Mountcastle, and that'll make the count 3-0. and oh. One out, gunner at first base. Let's see if Mountie is given the green light against the lefty. And that's a called strike, but not a good strike in terms of offering. Mountcastle did well to lay off on that one. In on the hands. Three and one on Mountcastle. The pitch is low for ball four. That was never close. Mountcastle looked like he was... Reaching down to take off the shin guard before the pitch was even all the way there. So first and second now with one away. 
And that'll bring up Anthony Santander. He's got a couple of hits tonight. I believe both of them were doubles. Yep, a double and a ground rule double. By the way, it was officially a ground rule double, that second double he hit down in the right field corner. In case that matters to you. So a pair of extra base hits for Santander tonight. And a RBI spot here, first and second with one out. 7 nothing Baltimore here in the top of the sixth, and he takes a called strike from Zerpa. Santander hitting from the right side for the first time tonight. And he lifts one into the air off the end of the bat, but it's going deep right center. And Renfro will make the catch. Gunner will tag and go to third. There's two outs now. Wow, that ball didn't look like it had much off the end of the bat by Santander, but he hit it pretty deep out there to right center field. First and third now, two away. Oh, that's right. Folks, another reason. I mean, come on. I totally forgot about that. Jordan Westberg coming up to the plate, and I'm going to tell you what, next half inning, next break, we're going to talk about that. Westberg's up with runners at first and third and two down. He loves these spots to drive in runs so far this season. He's been a two-out RBI machine. But Lucky doesn't pay me. This one is fouled back. Plus, I don't even know if they make Lucky Strikes anymore. <laughs> Are they even available? I'll just switch to Chesterfields or another outdated cigarette brand. The 0-1 to Westberg is hit on the ground. Shortstop, Witt to second for one. And that's all they need. A force play to get Mountcastle at second to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Orioles seven. Royals nothing. And folks, it is 420. Come on, but folks, what better way as my sub count goes down? <laughs> Come on, folks, have a heart. It's 420, people. I mean, light one up. Take a toke and hit the sub button for crying out loud. How about your boy, the bird watcher on 420? Oh, so luckies have returned. I mean, honestly, of all the days for the for the subs to be in a stall mode right now. 420? Come on. How do you think Snoop Dogg would feel about this? Do it for Snoop. Right? 420, folks. <laughs> Nothing. Zero. Wow, things are a little different than before. It used to be whenever I made a push, a few people would, uh, you know, Join the merry band of bird watchers. But lately, I don't know. Let's see how many people are here right now. 77 people. 77. Se seven runs on the board. 77 people. Lucky sevens everywhere you look. Folks. All right. We'll go another inning. Bottom of the sixth. It'll be 9-1-2 and two due up for Kansas City. Kyle Isbell at the plate. Corbin Burns out there for his sixth inning of work, and the first pitch is fouled back. Wait a minute. That seems like a... Con or a contradiction there, Sean. 
Here's a pop-up foul off to the right and out of play by Isbell. 0-2 the count. How can it be a national day if it's random? How do you have a random drug testing day? It doesn't sound that random if it's a national testing day. That seems like a contradiction. 0-2 on Isbell. And just a bit outside. One ball and two strikes. I love to have my random drug test announced on the calendar. <laughs> this one is tapped foul off to the right. One and two on Isbell leading off the bottom of the six. The Orioles up seven nothing and have been uh, it's been that way now for most of the ball game. And this one is swung on a miss. Isbell chases one low and away. Strikeouts starting to mount here for Burns later in the ballgame. Isbell strikes out back to the top of the order for Michael Garcia. Burns now with three strikeouts, but only two hits and no walks. Through five in the third innings. Garcia looks at one low for ball one. <laughs> this one's low and away. We got ourselves a convoy here in chat. We got ourselves a convoy. This will be the 79th pitch of the night from Burns, 2 and 0 on Garcia. And there's a called strike. Just catching the bottom outside corner of the zone. Two and one, the pitch hit to the right, and it's going to drop in front of Santander, and let's see if Garcia goes for two. He's hustling. Here comes the throw. Garcia makes it in there with a slide. A hustle double on a hit to right field by Michael Garcia. So the Royals have a runner in scoring position with one out here in the bottom of the sixth. That'll bring up Bobby Witt Jr., I hate to say it because I feel like it's a jinx, but up 7 nothing, I have to report what's true, and that is so far in the series, the Orioles have done a great job keeping Bobby Witt Jr. quiet. And first pitch to him is inside, 96 miles an hour from Burns, so he's still got the gas going here in the sixth. The 1-0, lifted foul off to the right. One and one on Bobby Witt Jr. How long will Burns go? I think with a seven run lead, we don't wanna make him throw more than we need to. There's a chance if he gets, you know, like a double, uh, well, he won't get a double play, runner at second. My money is that this is his last inning. Two and one the count. He's on 83 pitches. He still needs to get a couple of outs. So the odds are he's going to be in the 90s by the time this inning is over. So my guess is this is going to be it for Burns. Seven run lead. You need, three, you need nine more outs. You're, you would hope your bullpen can protect a seven run lead. Three and one the count now on Bobby Witt Jr., The pitch, swing and a miss, a challenge fastball right down Broadway, and Witt comes up empty. And Burns surely making a note of that. Full count. The pitch, pop-up 
popped foul behind the plate. Yeah, so Burns, a long at bat here with Bobby Wood Jr. It makes sense. You're getting him and hopefully Pascantino, the next hitter, out to get through six innings. Those are the that's the tough part of the lineup. Then you send it over to your bullpen. Swing and a miss. A foul tip on a cutter on the outside by Corbin Burns. Another strikeout. Again, first four innings or so, no strikeouts. Now he's got four. Saving his best for the end of the game. And now if he can get through Pascantino here. That first pitch is just off the plate outside, a little low maybe, 1-0. Burns is pitching like a true ace. I mean, really, like he, there's a strike. Like you can see when he, if he falls behind a batter, he knows how to get back into the at bat. If something isn't quite working, he knows when to switch to something else. And he's not necessarily going up there trying to strike everybody out. He says, let me just do what I need to do to get outs and later in the game when I need the strikeout pitch, I'll break it out. Uh, two and one on Pascantino. And that one is just off the plate outside. Three and one. Pascantino had a home run last night and he's got one of the only two hits of the game for the Royals. The other hit being the double by Garcia currently standing out on second base. The pitch, excuse me, there's been three hits. That's a called strike. Three and two the count. I apologize. That was the third hit tonight by Garcia. Sal Salvador Perez has a two-out single. That's right. I think in the previous inning, Perez had a two-out single maybe two innings ago. Okay, the full count pitch is line foul off to the left. And with that, Burns is about to throw his 94th pitch. So not only is he not going to pitch in the seventh, if he doesn't get Pascantino here, we have to start wondering. I believe we got Melendez. No, we got Perez on deck. And then Melendez, the lefty next. This one's low and in. Pascantino draws the walk. I want to see Burns get one more batter. Here comes Drew French. And this looks like an opportunity to buy time and basically tell Burns, look, we're going to try to get you through six innings, get you the quality start, but this is your last batter one way or the other. Give it everything you got. We got a lefty getting loose for Melendez, who's on deck. So we got you covered. I got a feeling that's pretty much the gist of this conversation. Get us one more out, Corbin. Get that quality start. Yeah, see, this is why I might need to make Don no longer. <laughs> and Don, it, w it wouldn't be a, uh, it wouldn't be a, an insult to revoke your mod mod status. But if there's only mods chatting. <laughs> I don't know if that's good optics for those that are new to the channel wondering, wow, do I need to be a mod to join in? No, you don't have to be a mod, folks. You can chat. We got a 7 nothing ball game. Oh, how about that? Altoona getting walked off by a salami. The 0-1 to Perez is hit foul off to the left 0-2. So Burns on the cusp of 100 pitches. The next will be 97. He's got two strikes and two out here in the sixth. Trying to close out a very good day on the mound with one more out. Trying to get Perez. Lefty Melendez on deck. The 0-2 pitch. Is in the dirt, one and two.
Two on, two out. The one, two to Perez. Swung on. High fly ball, high in the air to left field, and that'll get into the bullpen. The Royals have finally gotten to Corbin Burns, and that's going to be his last pitch of the game, surely. A three-run homer from Salvador Perez, and the Royals still behind by four, but it doesn't feel like a blowout anymore. 7-3 Baltimore, and here comes Brandon Hyde to make the move. Unfortunate for Burns. One pitch away from getting out of the game with a quality start and no runs. Instead, he gives up three and leaves before the end of six. That's a tough one there for Burns. But he still gave us a good outing. He's shaking his head as he goes back to the dugout. Hang in there, Corbin. We're going to we're going to get this one home. We're going to get this one home. Mayo had a two homer, six RBI night. Enough already. Call him up. Call him up. Call up Mayo. God, you, it's the one glaring hole in the Orioles roster right now. You can see it. A right-handed power bat. That would make our lineup against lefties way better. Ugh, get him up. Get Mayo up. You know? Get Mayo up here. Honestly, folks, honestly, at this point, as much of a Jackson Holiday fan as you might be, just imagine what this roster would look like if, first of all, the benefit, if you send Holiday down, three or four days into that sent downtime adds an extra year service time. So there is an actual benefit to doing it regardless of, uh, you know, the fact that he needs to do it. Secondly, Let's say you send Jackson down for 10 days to two weeks. Bring up Mayo and just give him that as an audition. If he fails, then we can send him back down. I'm not worried about options. I'm not worried about spending an option because Mayo is eventually going to be called up for good well before we run out of options. I'm not worried about that. I mean, if we're going to... Keep everybody else on the team because we can't send down a guy like Urias. We can't send down a guy like Hayes. They're on the team or they're off the team. I say send Holiday back down and bring up Mayo. Let's go. I, I want Holiday up. Eventually, when Holiday starts raking, if Mayo is doing well while he's up here and we got a decision to make, then you, then you worry about Urias or somebody else. Here's a pop-up. Danny Coulomb out to pitch, and on the second pitch, he gets an infield pop-up to end the inning. So the Orioles cough up a three-run homer to Salvador Perez. Corbin Burns' day is over. Five and two-thirds gives up three runs, but it was a solid outing all the same. We head to the seventh, Orioles seven, Kansas City three. Uh, what? Don C? Don, are you okay, dude? Did I upset you? I'm, I'm sorry. It was a very lighthearted piece of conversation. Uh, but okay. Wow. Well, that's it for Don C, apparently. Apparently, just mentioning how much I enjoy having him talk in the chat was an insult. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. So there you go. The bird watcher burning bridges left and right somehow.
Not really sure how he's doing it, but if, <laughs> okay. Good Lord. Booty, I do think Mayo will be up before Heston, and it has nothing really to do with the, f you know, who's hitting better than the other. It's just a matter of who's more valuable to the team based on what we need right now. And we need a right-handed power bat that can play the infield more than we need a left-handed power bat that can kind of play the outfield. I mean, that is weird, man. That is really strange. I, I, I don't get that at all, but okay. Okay, Anthony Veniz, Veniz, Veneziano. Anthony Veneziano is on the pitch here for the Royals. I think I got that right, a left-hander. Austin Hayes at the plate, and here's a ball smacked into left center field for a base hit. Lead-off single for Austin Hayes. First man on here in the top of the seventh. Uh, yeah, I'm not here to bring drama to this. We're here to watch a ball game and have fun, folks. <laughs> this is not a place for drama, okay? There's plenty of YouTube channels to go to for a lot of just fabricated drama that I don't need. This one is grounded foul off to the left by Urias. Hayes at first, nobody out here in the top of the seventh. The Orioles, after going up 7-0 early, now are up 7-3 in the late innings. Veneziano on the mound, the lefty. And the next pitch is low. One ball and one strike on Urias. That was a flip of a, an emotional switch. Wow. <laughs> I mean, so I'm just a nice guy. Everything's great with a channel. And then I say the most innocuous thing and dude just says, forget it forever. Folks, we're living in a day and age now with, with telecommunications to the point where we're not even acting human anymore. Let's try and be a little understanding of each other. Here's a foul back by Urias, and the count even up at two and two. I mean, I'm here. I'm wanting to build a community for people who love baseball, who loves to watch the Orioles. That's it. That's all this boy wants. I'm, I'm here for the journey. I'd love to, for you guys to be here with me. But one way or the other, I'm calling Orioles games all season. I hope you're here with me. This one's fouled off by Urias. Two and two the count. Runner at first, nobody out here in the top of the seventh. I agree with you, Booty. I think I was saying about a week ago that Ryan O'Hearn is sort of the, the quiet giant in this lineup. This one's fouled back. I mean, against right-handed pitching, he's the first guy you put in the lineup. Two and two on Veneziano, and the pitch is tapped in front of the plate, but foul. Hayes will retreat back to first. I'm not sure if he was off with the pitch. It looked like he was. Waiting on the 2-2 from Veneziano. Here it is. Popped up. Right field. Renfro in his tracks makes the catch. Barely had to move. One away here in the top of the seventh. That'll bring up James McCann. McCann won for three tonight. Had an RBI single back in the second. 
That giant seven-run rally accounting for all the runs tonight for Baltimore. Check on the runner. He's back. Am I having a bad day? <laughs> I think Don C was having a bad day. Uh, maybe the subs aren't at the same uh, rate today as before, but your boy, the bird watcher, again, I don't know how to make this any more clear. I, I'm here to call games regardless of everything going on with the channel. I've got two goals. Call the ball game and grow the channel. Priority one is call the ball game. I'm doing that, and I'll continue to do that no matter what's going on. Uh, one and one the count here on McCann. I mean, we're winning. If you wanted to see me having a bad day, you should have been here last night when we were losing. <laughs> the one one pitch has popped up. Shallow center. Isbell calls off Renfro to make the catch, and there's two down. Idea on the problem. I didn't know there was a problem. Is, is there something going on tonight that your boy, the bird watcher, is unaware of? Like, I, I think the channel, the status of the channel is fine. I think every, everything's fine. I mean, here's my concerns. Is the audio quality okay? Uh, are, you, are you able to follow along okay? Are you able to chat without any problems? Like, as long as all that's happening, I, your boy's fine. Owen won the pitch. That one's lined up the middle on the ground for a base hit for Mateo. And hustling up to third base and hustling into second base. Aggressive base running by the Orioles. Hayes gets to third. Mateo to second on a base hit that was pretty much up the middle. Left center. But by no means would one think that's a double, but Mateo with the hustle double. Second and third with two down. That ball was 106.8 miles an hour off the bat, by the way. Gunnar Henderson at the plate. Two down, and he takes a called strike. Would love to get that lead back up to... A half dozen or so like we had it here before the last half inning. Two runners on. There's a called strike at the bottom of the zone. 0-2. Charm City chat. We doing okay? Your boy's okay. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. It's, it's a little weird tonight. I can go ahead and I can... I can admit that. It's been a little weird, but I'm not sure why. That's that's what I'm wondering. Like, why is it weird? This one's off the plate, one and two. I feel like I'm doing the same thing I'm doing every night in terms of calling the game, trying to get you guys pumped. And this one's in the dirt, and it will get away. It will get all the way away. Hayes will come in to score on a wild pitch. Let's take it. There's one run back. The Orioles now ahead 8-3 to three on a wild pitch that allows Austin Hayes to score. Mateo now moves up to third. Thank you, Matt. I feel the same way. This one's off the plate, and the count goes full on Gunnar Henderson. Like, folks, you guys, you guys got to realize, like, YouTube drama or whatever, channels and chat and subs and all that, it's so on the back burner. The number one thing for me is I want to see the Orioles win a pennant, period. Your boys waited 41 years to see the Orioles 
win a pennant. Never mind win the World Series, just getting there. That's what I care about. I bleed orange and black, okay? I live halfway around the world. I love my Orioles. This is a passion project. That's what matters to me. Three and two, and it's a swing and a miss by Henderson. A high fastball. He didn't chase. That one had the top of the zone, but he couldn't catch up to it, and he strikes out to win the inning. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time. Folks, let's get some cakes on the griddle. Come on now. Cakes are on the griddle. Seventh inning stretch time here in Kansas City. 79 people watching right now. Hey, folks, is it uh, a crazy goal to maybe set the goal for likes at 50? A nice round number five, zero. Six of you watching right now can help make that happen. Be a 